The fundamental contention of this book is that it is not always rational to be moral. How revolutionary was that, Evelyn? Extraordinarily revolutionary to write it down. Not revolutionary at all in terms of political thinking, in terms of how diplomacy operated, and in terms of how, if you like, agents talked to each other. The extraordinary thing was that Machiavelli took something which was effectively understood amongst good men who looked each other in the eye and winked, but not put between covers and sold to the general public there. So, if you like, what Machiavelli is taking his experience of the active life, as Quentin has said, and and kind of opening it up for scrutiny. It, It needs to be stressed, of course, it wasn't published in his lifetime yeah. there. And again, I think the context of the extraordinary turbulence of the time, that this is a period in which men seem to be making themselves as princes on an almost daily basis. Can you just, <coughs> excuse me, can you ask you to develop the, what, uh, in that brilliant summary, Quentin said at the end of it, that it's not always rational to be moral. Can you just develop that a little? Well, I think we need to step back a, a moment and recognise that in... Anglo-Saxon culture, sort of post-Enlightenment Anglo-Saxon culture, the notion of the impersonal bureaucrat working for the abstract ideal is something that we hold quite dear. And it's very hard for us then to look back at Machiavelli's world without using words like amoral there. But in, in his community, to, if you like, serve something without also serving your family, your friends, those, your neighbours, those you care about most, is in itself foolish, genuinely foolish, because, as Quentin has said, you'll get nowhere, um, and you'll find yourself on the receiving end of other families' antagonisms there. So you begin by protecting your amici there, first and foremost, and then you can protect the state. You move from, if you like, the domestic to the political, as opposed to what we see as correct today, moving from the political to the domestic. But, but for many people, it's just, uh, it, it, there will seem to be a clash, because the word virtue comes up, the word serve, and the word glory, and yet you're allowed to go about it in the most, what we would say, you're allowed to use deceit, you're allowed to use revenge, you're allowed to use, uh, and that sort of thing. Well, and lies, of course, it is good to lie, he says at certain what? times beautifully coming out of this this discourse um, from Quentin to Evelyn is there's a sort of pun and a sort of fulcrum at the centre of this, which is mantenare lo stato. So it's your state, but it's also the stability of the state and the people who make up the state. And we keep coming back to these terribly turbulent times. What you have happening is that some political thinkers... Machiavelli is one, think about the prince as maintaining stability, whatever it takes. Some, like Erasmus, say the prince has got to be virtuous and it's the people who consent to what it takes to be virtuous. Both are talking about stability, about please get us out of these times where year on year the the gates of the city are broken down and somebody else comes in and we're pillaged and, and there's a whole new administration. So Machiavelli's virtue is in the interests of those of the public who make up the city because, ironically, even if you have to turn a blind eye to vice, to torture, to duplicitous uh, behaviour, to killing off your enemies in order to serve your family interests, keep your family safe, even if you have to turn a blind eye to that, what you get is stability. And at the core of the princes, the, the problem that if you have seized power, which is going on up and down Italy, you are inevitably in an instable position. There is no equilibrium. As he says over and over again, equilibrium comes only if you are a great benevolent ruler and you pass on your benevolent rule to your children and their children. You should be so lucky. Instead, you have the King of France invading or you have the Pope interfering. In instable times, Machiavelli says, there too can only be the kind of strong arm behaviour which stops the next guy tipping the balance and taking over power. He does say that his fine systems would work if all men were good, but they are not. Mm. Yes. And then we, isn't there, uh, isn't there a, a, 
Is there in the work, Quentin Skinner, is it open to the interpretation of then in the search for stability? Um, two things, uh, many things I happen. First of all, it lends itself to authoritarianism, yes. uh, stability at all costs, therefore. Uh, and yes. secondly, that in this work, the last vestiges of republicanism are, 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 are seen off. What, yes. Could you, could you take those two on? Yes. Well, of course, the quest for stability is the great quest, and everything has to be seen in relation to that. And it is true, as uh, Lisa has already implied, <coughs> that what this in effect brings about is a redefinition of this notion of political virtue which had been central to the Republican tradition. I actually think, perhaps more than Evelyn does, that Machiavelli's take on political virtue would have been very shocking at the mm. time, uh, if only because, as I see it, it's a kind of satire on the values of classical and Renaissance humanism. The great text for these writers, and the text that Machiavelli certainly had in his study, along with his Livy, was Cicero's De Officiis, the study of the offices, that's to say the duties of the public life. And uh, the central theme of that work, and thus of classical humanism, is that um, virtue and here's another important pun, is the quality of the vir, that's to say the man. It's a manly quality. Vir is man, yes. Vir is man, virile, the mm. source of our word. Um, and so it's the, it's the virile qualities that enable stability to be maintained. But for Cicero, it's crucial that these are manly qualities by contrast with beastly qualities. Mm. And you brought it out beautifully in the introductory quotation because Cicero goes on to say, look, in politics you must avoid beastliness because the two things to be avoided are pure force and pure fraud. Pure force is the lion, pure fraud is the fox. These are beasts, we are men, this is to be avoided. Now think of chapter 18 of The Prince. It's a satire on all these values. And Machiavelli says, of course manly virtue is a good thing if you can manage it, but in our time and in the quest for stability, you will have to use beastly methods as well as manly methods. And so, as he says in the immortal phrase, you better know which beasts to imitate. And I say, he who comes off best, and I'm now quoting, is the man who has learnt to imitate the lion and the fox. What isn't usually seen is that that's a quotation from Cicero, an upending of all of the values in the name of saying, look, this idea that the virtuous form of action <coughs> is the one that brings stability is the great illusion of the age. But it does take us into, into dark areas of interpretation, doesn't it? But once you say that, people think, right, anything I do to secure what I can maintain is a virtuous uh, stability. Yes. Uh, in the name of that, I can do anything I want, really. Yes, but he does block that off, and he blocks it off by the extent to which he is a classical moralist, and the key passage is chapter 8, where he discusses Agathocles, the tyrant of Sicily, who was enormously successful, saw off all his enemies, murdered the entire Senate, uh, died in his bed. So Machiavelli says, well, why is that not virtu? He maintained his state, uh, he fought off all his enemies, and he has a very interesting remark there. He says in the Italian, this will bring you imperio, ma non gloria power but not glory. And the goal of the true prince is power and glory. So his prince is distinguished from the thug. Machiavelli is not saying uh, be the thug. He's saying be the thug if it's absolutely necessary. <laughs> I think you're being an advocate, but I think we could have different views on that. <laughs>